All right, well, hey everyone, how's it going? Sean here with another Genetry solar video. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and pop the lid on this particular inverter. And uh, we're going to see the insides. There's not really much that hasn't been covered that's not already on the website. Powerjack, the factory that is, took a whole bunch of pictures of this inverter on the inside. So um you basically get everything but you know let's do some commentary here as far as everything that's going on in the inside so without further ado i went ahead and removed all the screws so the lid's going to pop off uh do keep in mind that uh if you do pop your lid you will void your warranty we will have warranty stickers that will show tamper so please keep in mind that you will void your warranty if you decide to open up your unit and i do already know some people who are already going to void their warranty as soon as they get it so this is obviously stainless steel and in my opinion this is among the best that uh as far as design and materials that um, have been used for a power jet converter and that's why i transitioned that or copied that over to the genetry solar inverter and this is thick stuff this is the same stuff that they put in their 15 kilowatt 20 kilowatt and 30 kilowatt units they use a thinner sheet for their smaller units such as the 8 kilowatt and 6 kilowatt and even smaller for their 3 kilowatt and i think 2000 watt inverters but so case thickness was very important to me because I wanted something that was going to be heavy duty and this is indeed heavy duty. This this inverter, if you saw my live stream, came without any damage with the exception of the insulator that is on the transformer bolt on the other neath. That is plastic and uh, obviously uh, plastic being like this very thin plastic and it ended up snapping i have a whole bunch of these so easy to replace but i'm actually considering an alternative that i will install in the shipping inverters for this so keep that in mind it's not going to affect the quality of the inverter or anything else like that it'll actually be more durable than this it'll be a better insulator now the insulator is required because this bolt actually attaches to this case here and um, well that'll cause everything to heat up so you don't want to do that that's why they insulate this transformer bolt that runs through the transformer they insulate that from the case itself and it'll kind of act like another winding anyways so um, yeah I mean that was pretty much about all that I had noticed these are production units so obviously with production units you can still make some tweaks and adjustments and that's exactly what we're gonna do here so the transformer has increased in size versus the prototype unit that I have sitting on my batteries right now. So this is a larger transformer. Sid engineered it to basically allow it to accept 6,000 watts continuous minimum below or no greater than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is a estimated number. That is not a scientific number, but it is estimated that with this transformer in place you can get 6000 watts continuous if your temperature your ambient temperature that is the temperature that's coming into the inverter does not exceed 100 degrees fahrenheit now of course you can push this thing even harder if you unlock it if you haven't seen any of my information on that it is possible to void your warranty unlock this by software and then the inverter will rely on these thermistors here to tell it when it needs to shut down now obviously that is not an invitation to say okay i'm going to put 40 kilowatts on this thing that's just absolutely ridiculous but you can probably get a good seven eight or even nine kilowatts out of this depending on your ambient temperature if you remember the prototype which has a smaller transformer and the vents were in the wrong spot and they were smaller we were squeezing 8,000 watts out of it and it was running at about 75 degrees ambient temperature and it did not climb as far as the temperature goes any further so that's 8,000 watts on the old setup here we have improved the ventilation 
we've improved the transformer so we know that we're going to get at least 8,000 watts at that temperature it's probably going to be even more but I am not going to encourage anyone to go out and immediately uh, void their warranty and start pushing this thing well beyond because it's still not a good idea to push your equipment to its absolute red line stuff breaks down so yes while you may be able to get seven or eight thousand watts it is true that the harder you push it that is the more you play the more you pay so there is a possibility although we have safeties in place such as thermal sensors we have safeties in place but there's always a possibility for premature failure when you're pushing it beyond its designed specifications which in our case we have labeled that as being 6,000 watts continuous and this thing no effort at all getting 6,000 watts continuous no effort at all so yes the transformer has been upgraded and if you'll notice these windings here if these look familiar to you for the large inverters these were actually in the Frankenstein inverter that was in the ASL series large 15 kilowatt transformers we opted to use the larger windings and I think it was a good idea on Sid's part to make sure that this was going to be able to handle the current so you can see just how thick these are look how thick those are those are just monsters you will definitely um, not see these in a smaller um, or equivalent sized power jack inverter but we engineered it for its advertised capabilities now then thermistors since we are speaking of there's going to be a total of four thermistors inside this unit okay there will be one thermistor that is going to be located on the negative AC that will monitor the temperatures of the MOSFETs so from experience so far we may place one of these maybe on the DC side as well because this will have charge as well and that may heat some things up but we're gonna do some testing but from experience the negative side of the transformer mainboard AC output is usually the one that's the warmest out of all of them so as much as I've pushed inverters and we even pushed our prototype inverter these barely get warm barely so we're confident that we're not gonna to need to put a whole bunch of thermistors all over this thing so we're gonna obviously do some testing and we're gonna confirm that but we have over engineered this because you're getting 12 MOSFETs on each side which is just unheard of for this size of inverter it's overkill but the over the point is is that these will spread the load and you won't have to worry about MOSFETs overheating or burning out on you so as I said usually at least with the prototype usually I put three thermistors on the transformer place them as far away from each other as possible so kinda of like a triangle that way you can monitor the temperature of the entire transformer or most of it because if you just have one thermistor that's sitting like right there on top then it's only gonna see the temperature at this one point of the transformer and as the transformer is heating up you may have a hot spot over here or over here or whatever so you reduce the likelihood that the inverter isn't going to see a transformer heating up when you spread the thermistors out it's kind of like zone monitoring so typically what I do is I'll place one down here because hot air always rises so you're gonna get this side is gonna be a little bit cooler than the bottom so I make sure to put one down here at the bottom and I'll probably put one on the side over here on the exhaust temperature so that it can actually see what the exhaust is going to be and then probably one down here on this side really the the key is to make sure that they're as far away from each other as possible that way you have a good round number a good average of what the transformer temperature actually is but I'm not anticipating any issues at all with overheating as long as you don't push it well beyond its rated spec and obviously your software limited to 6,000 watts speaking of which the software limit is 6,000 watts is not an absolute limit where as soon as you hit that wall boom the inverter shuts down that's not the case so we will be obviously throttling over time so if you're sitting at let's say 63 or 6400 watts 
we're going to assume that you're pushing the inverter beyond its 6,000 watts, which is where you warranty. And we will give you warnings ahead of time. We're not going to just arbitrarily just shut it down without warning. But we will give you warnings that you're pushing the inverter beyond its guaranteed minimum. And then eventually it's going to shut down. Priority number one, though, over everything is the, the temperatures. So if it sees temperature, even if you're not pushing it to 6 kilowatts, which is obviously extremely unlikely, but if it sees temperatures that exceed the 165 degree threshold that we currently have it set on, it will automatically shut down anyways. So there you go for that. But we haven't exactly figured out the formula that we're going to use as far as when we're going to shut it down because it's not fair for somebody who's, you know, maybe they have an air conditioner startup or whatever, and it briefly goes above that 6,000 watts. You know, that's... Um, we're not going to punish somebody and then suddenly the, all their house shuts down because they, you know, for 10 seconds went above 6,000 watts. Now, obviously, we will have a hard limit, even those who unlock their inverter. So, obviously, if you're trying to push 20,000 watts through it, that's extremely dangerous. And we're going to do everything we can to prevent that. Um, but, um, you know, we still haven't figured out that exact formula. But... Trust me when I say that you're getting well beyond your 6,000 watts um, that you're paying for. So, anyways, um, again, a lot of this stuff is, you know, subject to tweaking and, and so on. And obviously feedback. I'm sure that I'm going to get some feedback based on, um, you know, what we're talking about here. And, um, you know, we'll just have to um, obviously provide you with the best information possible i'm sure sid has some ideas of how he wants to proceed i've got ideas we'll collaborate and then obviously youtube is going to provide us some feedback as well and we'll collaborate there but anyways enough about that so improved transformer there you go <laughs> this is the revision one uh actually technically it's kind of revision two let's see what sid stamped on this one um this would be revision a1 so Revision A1 of the Genetry Solar Control Board, and it does have some enhancements such as the new driver board. This is the Genetry Solar driver board. Look at how simple that thing is. Look how small that is. Boy, Sid did a fantastic job on this thing. But um, this here is an awesome piece of equipment, and uh, yeah, we can't wait to really put it through its paces this is I believe it is identical to the one that is in the prototype but this is the new driver board um, this is your ground for you know the uh, uh, control board this goes to the um, the front panel up here where you've got the uh, generator controls and then of course this here goes to the power button um, I have been asked if this power button can be extended, and yes, it can. So for those who need custom builds or whatever, this power button cable can be extended. There's really not much more to go through. This is a universal transformer. You can see it's already been connected for us. Um, and uh, we're basically just uh, going to be putting this together. Um, the transformer can be wound in 12, 24, or 48 volts and all of the transforming legs have been uh, labeled for us and that way you know they're easy for me to tell basically when I connect them up in series in this case where they're all going to be connected in series to get 48 volts or all in parallel to get 12 volts or series parallel to get 24 volts or series series parallel to get you know you get the point it's uh, got to be set up in a certain way in order for this to actually work these wires here are actually for the uh, the LCD. Um, so, anyways, I think I pretty much covered it. These are two high-speed fans. You get one in the rear that's going to pull air in through here. You got one at the top that's going to pull air down through here, and it's all going to be pushed out of the inverter. So, I am super proud of this. I mean, this is a fantastic inverter. Hardware-wise, the brains and the design is SID right here. Now I will note something. You can see these two filter capacitors that are right here, right? 
So these filter capacitors are responsible for cleaning up the sine wave. We are actually going to be modifying this slightly so that a filter capacitor will go from L1 to neutral and then L2 to neutral rather than just jumping across from L1 to L2. And that will clean up the sine wave even more. Now the downside to having caps like this is it will consume more of the standby. So your, um, your standby loads are going to be a little bit higher, but the sine wave is going to be a lot cleaner. And I think, or at least I believe, that a, a cleaner sine wave is much more important than losing a couple, you know, maybe one or 200 milliamps on idle, um, especially at 48 volts. Those of you who are running at 12 volts, you're obviously going to see more um, of that drain, but um, I would personally rather have a clean sine wave with an inverter that um, uses just a little bit more energy to produce that clean sine wave. So we will be modifying that on this board. That way it's a much cleaner, better looking sine wave, and it'll work great for things like three phase. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Everything is to our specifications. Um, so these wires right here on the DC side, these will handle the maximum load. Now, I have not sold a single 12 volt Genetry Solar Inverter. Not a single one, okay? We still have time to make some adjustments to our 12 volt. We are theorizing at this point that we might have to pull back the rated load for a 12 volt inverter. Of course, I'll be incredibly transparent about that when you order it because we're still not 100% sure that that kind of amperage, I mean, that's a just a ridiculous amount of amps, you know, 300 amps at 12 volts. That's, that's a crazy amount of amperage that has to travel through these terminals, through these wires, and it's just gonna heat way up. So we may scale that back to, let's say, 5,000 watts. We're not 100% sure yet. We still have to talk about that. But since we have not actually sold one of those yet, um, that's not going to be uh, a concern because no one has bought a 12-volt with the understanding or the expectation that it's going to do a full 6,000 watts. So we are still looking at that. We're obviously going to do some testing with that to figure that out. Well, there you have it. Almost 20 minutes long. This is a great, great build, and I'm super excited. There's a lot of connectors here that go nowhere right now simply because this is a fan connector. A lot of this gets plugged into the LCD, which will sit right on the top here. So when this is all done and all assembled, of course, you guys are going to see lots of videos on this. Super excited. So thanks again for all of your support. Uh, as of this video, I still have a couple of these units available for the first ocean shipping if you're interested. You can head over to Genetry Solar, but if you're not sure, uh, just send me an email or a text. I'll let you know if I still have some in stock. So thanks again for all of your support, as always, and take care.